that here, wasn't it? Yeah, that should do. 2009, as an anniversary treat in June, we took a safari with Johnny Kingdom. At the end of it, he said, well, you've got a decent camera, boy. Go and do it yourself. So what we did, we thought, that's not a bad idea. Okay. I've come to Langford Heathfield because I know the answer to that question is around here, somewhere. Let's try that way. Okay, it's fine. So we made one episode as an experimental piece, really. We put it onto DVD and the response was absolutely phenomenal, unbelievable. So we thought, this is going really well. Why don't you make some more? So then we used the format then we use now, which is basically three episodes, half episodes um, per DVD, plus extras on the end. And it was just, when's the next one? This should be on television. When's the next one? Okay, go on then. So what's the difference between a grasshopper and a cricket? Well, one way you can tell the difference is... I did some work for Channel 4 as um, an extra. That's about my limit of experience, really. Apart from that, it's been a learning curve, really. We've just, you know, as we've gone along, we've learned how to do it, really. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, I didn't have a clue. I literally read the manual and followed the instructions and then seemed to develop a feel for it as it went, started to see what was going to work, what wasn't going to work. Um, and you can see the progress as we've gone along. And sometimes now we watch the early stuff and I think, no... I wouldn't allow that now. Uh, I'd have redone that again. I'd have had that shot steadier. It's just you learn as you go. You strike me as probably being just about the right person to have behind the camera because you're, uh, you, <laughs> you do you like do to get, the get it right. Oh, yes. <laughs> you don't like in front of the camera. And if I, it's not right, I will definitely say so. Yeah. When we were going to make the programme, Amanda said, there's no way I'm going in front of the camera. <laughs> well, I'm not too bothered with cameras because of working for Channel 4. So I said, well, OK, I'll, I'll do the presenting. Um, so it kind of just fell into the parts, really. I mean, besides, I'm used to computers. I mean, look at them and they blow up. So man is much more technically minded than I am. So it made sense that, you know, I'd be the, produ the presenter and the man to be the, uh, everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I've studied wildlife since I was born. The first book I ever read was probably a bird book. So I have some knowledge, and quite a bit of knowledge, on birds anyway. And, you know, at five years old, I was bringing dead mice into the house, opening their mouths, saying, Mum, look at this, it's interesting! You know, um, so I've always loved natural history anyway. It was just a natural thing to do, really. We like um, watching wildlife programmes on the telly, but quite often the problem you find is you get a lot of presenter and not too much of the wildlife. And what you really want is to imagine you are there watching it and enjoying it. So we tend to put lots of wildlife, just enough presenter to string it together to give you that little extra bit of information that's informative, but keep it relaxing and refreshing at the same time so it flows along and is enjoyable. An example of that would probably be, say, take the blue tit. Most people know about the blue tit. What they might not know is the fact that it has another name, Little Billy Biter, because it will defend its nest against absolutely anything, no matter how big it is. And information like that that's interesting... It's like we did a piece on the ex-estuary and we learnt and, and gave over on the, on the camera the information that the, uh, they get nutrients from the, the creatures in the mud, which is 14 times that of a Mars bar, like 14 Mars bars in a human terms. Those kind of information that people think, that's interesting, didn't know that. So just to add a bit more spice to the thing, you know. Originally, I wanted to do my own little programs because I thought oh, he's doing it might be quite fun but then dad suggested that perhaps I could be the backup um, camera really and so we did and it was and really spray set off yeah well we started off with producing a, a website which details what we do and there are video clips on it so people can see the sort of thing we've done and there's a guest book so that when people have got in touch through the website to say they're interested in having a copy, they can then put an email through to, to say what they think. We've also passed them on to people we know like Wildlife, who've passed them on to their friends and on to their friends, and it's sort of spread its way round. 
Um, so on average, we put out about 30 DVDs every time we make a production, which is heavy going for the computer, heavy going for your time. Um, and we, the guest book just shows how much people love it because their comments are always relaxing, informative, refreshing, and people do put it on for genuine family chill-out time from three years old up to 93, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. And also we've just started to put them into local tourist information centres just to see how that goes. Grasshoppers also come out during the day, whereas crickets tend to come out at night. That's why you, they're the ones you hear singing at dusk. And grasshoppers eat grass, whereas crickets will also eat animal matter. And they tend to be slightly... I think what we building. have here is, is a unique product that has a lot of potential, far more than we are able to give it, um, because we just don't know the contacts. Um, the ultimate goal really is to have this um, as a TV series. Um, I think it's got the potential for it. Um, I think it would have the audience, but it's knowing the right people in the right places to get it to that point. So we're working really towards promoting this as much as we can. But it's different, so it takes somebody who is brave enough to try something a little bit different. Different doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. And the guest book just proves it, because the guest book is fantastic. When's another one? This should be on television. We've had that people ringing us up saying how m marvellous these programmes are, which is great, a surprise, but it's great, which means, tells me, tells all of us, We've got something here that's got far more potential. This one, the meadow grasshopper, is the only one that can't fly. You can have to jump. Where'd you go? Got one. I've got one. <laughs> Any clue? No, try and find another one. Okay. Come Where a bit are you? This time. Got one. Come on, little grasshopper. Nia's got a big grasshopper.